Welcome to Insight, today produced in partnership between Alaska Public Media and M. Oppenheim TV. Today we're chatting with Robin Dublin, Executive Director of the Alaska Botanical Garden. Robin has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Robin, for joining us today. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. So Alaska has a very, very short growing season. Talk about how you approach managing a botanical garden in this environment as opposed to other environments where you've also run organizations. It is really different. Uh, here, in addition to the daylight hours, you know, in the, in the winter, it gets very dark and it's cold and it's icy, so it's hard for people to come out to the garden and enjoy it in the winter. In the summer, the light kicks in. It's kicking in now in March, and it will be very bright, and our growing season is intense. Our garden is actually open daylight hours, and people don't quite know what that means, but if it's around solstice and it's 1130 at night and you'd like to walk through the garden, it's open. It's a boreal forest, and in that forest, the master plan that was designed by the people who originally created the Alaska Botanical Garden, they had a vision of a wild area where you would move along a, a path and come and there, there would be an entryway into a garden. And here you would come into this designed beautiful garden and then you would move back out onto the path and meander through the woods again and come into another garden. And it's that idea of wilderness and cultivation together. And it creates a really magical interpretation of our relationship to nature. So when you come to the garden, right now only about six of the 110 acres is developed into, into formalized gardens. And our collection of plants, uh, our permanent collection, has over uh, 1,100 different species that are in our garden. And it's, it's a really special place because many of the botanical gardens that most visitors are used to seeing are really heavily manicured. And here you walk along a path and, and it is truly wooded with all sorts of uh, different kinds of plants that are part of the boreal forest and then you move into the herb garden and it's a traditional looking herb garden and it's beautiful and it has all those wonderful smells that an herb garden has and it's magical and then you move back out and you move along into a perennial garden and we have an annual garden that celebrates uh, 100 years of gardening in Anchorage and so it's very different. It has all sorts of, of uh, fruits and vegetables and uh, flowering plants that people would have planted 100 years ago. And the approach that you take is not an approach that is about pesticides. It's not an approach that is about um, artificial um, uh, anything, really. How do you manage that? Managing a, a northern latitude garden and making sure that it's organic, it's a tough one. The way we treat uh, water, our cleaning supplies, everything that we use, and we go all the way into our offices. Everything that we do, we make sure that we're looking at sustainability. What is the ecological impact of this product over that product? And it's a struggle. It means that when we are looking at a construction project, what kind of wood are we using and how are we using it? And those are, those are tough decisions. A lot of times they're expensive. If you look at our ability to grow the garden, no pun intended, but to grow the garden, we could be doing a lot more, a lot faster if we were using chemicals. But we really believe that we're stewards of the land that we have. And so it's, it's vital that we not only do that work in a way that is sustainable, but that we communicate that to the public. Because as a gardener, you can make a choice between using natural forms of, of composting material, creating your own compost, you know, doing those things that are going to allow you to be more sustainable in your little spot. And so it's our, it's our obligation to provide that information and to expose people to that. Because everyone is interested in growing food and growing flowers and having plants and we might as well do it in as, as clean a way as we can. We're in the process of a, a new project. We're really excited about it. We're building a greenhouse to essentially green our garden, to green our operations. There's, there's other pieces of sustainability within that particular structure. We've had tough decisions to make because you have to balance out sustainability with cost. Right. Uh, originally, we thought, we thought we would have composting toilets, but the reality is with the cost, we have to dig down and digging down in uh, a northern environment and that dig has very, earthquakes. very deep. Uh, it, it's, 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 it's very expensive. It's very expensive. But really looking at, can we heat this building using a ground source heat pump instead of uh, natural gas or electricity or whatever other, other form? It's expensive. That right there is a sixty to $75,000 price tag. 
but we felt that that was really a smart way for us to heat that building over time and really have a, a minimum impact on the environment. So that really excites us. Uh, we look at how do we make sure that we're, we're insulating this building in such a way that it's really efficient, that it's going to be good for growing, but it, that it's really efficient. And in doing that, it, it changes how you raise money, it changes how much money you raise, and how you approach that particular project. And this is a capital project that you are raising money for right now. It is, it is. And we've raised probably, I would say, 70% of the funds, and we're in the process of raising the remaining 25%. Uh, once we're done with this project, what we'll have is, is a greenhouse that will allow us to do some interesting things. You know, when you talk about sustainability and you think about green, right now what we do is many of the plants that we sell in our nursery, many of the plants that we put in our garden that are annuals, those plants are coming from outside Alaska. They're being shipped here. Mm -hmm. If you think about the, the carbon footprint of those plants coming here, they're being shipped here. A moving an orchid from someplace to here. To here. When instead what we should be doing and what we'll be able to do once we have this greenhouse is take plants from our property and from elsewhere in Alaska and bring those in and grow those and use those in our gardens, make them available to Alaskan gardeners, uh, have them be part of our permanent collection. So that's really exciting and it, it radically changes our footprint overall. When will the uh, greenhouse open? Uh, ideally it will open in the fall. The development of this greenhouse and the ability for you to grow your own seeds and, and then ultimately your own plants might also afford you a earned income opportunity over time. We hope so. That's part of our model. That is part of our model. So you're thinking in, in very much conservation terms, but conservation terms with also a business sensibility in terms of ass assuring that the organization remains strong and healthy going into the future. That's always something that, that as the executive director you have to focus on. And it causes you to make important and difficult decisions. It causes you to look at the organization from a business perspective, which many people struggle with. When they hear nonprofit, they think, oh, you shouldn't be making money. And it's, we need to be good stewards of the money that we make. And the more money that we bring in, the more money we can then use on our mission. You know, to me, when we're successful, if, if the greenhouse becomes truly successful and is able to add revenue to the organization, that revenue can then be used to support our education programs. We're currently in eight of 11 uh, low-income schools in Anchorage, and we've been invited to be in all 11 schools, but we simply don't have the capacity because we don't have the re enough of a revenue stream. So it's all really connected for us, and as the director, I have to think about those things. So it's important to, to balance out. It's not only important to balance it out, but let's face it, somebody purchasing some seeds or purchasing a ticket is a voluntary act. Mm -hmm. It's a voluntary act in which they are receiving the benefit yes. of the seeds or of uh, being able to experience something that you offer. And they also are able to fund the next thing that they will experience as well as the education of others. Mm -hmm. Robin Dublin, thank you so much for sharing the work of the Alaska Botanical Garden. Thank you so much for sharing the contributions of the community and your future, and thank you so much for your insights. Oh, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. This is great.